everyone, it's Philip Tucker. Right now it's time to turn back the clock, but it's also time to turn up the heat on ragtime music. We're going to explore the birth of ragtime music through the talent of none other than Scott Joplin. Scott Joplin is now considered the king of ragtime. He received this notoriety through his many accomplishments, including an opera, 12 songs, and an instructional piece. But what really set Joplin apart? It's his 52 piano pieces, 42 of which are rags. What is a rag, you might ask? Well, rag is short for ragtime, which is a genre of music with origins in the red light districts of St. Louis. Ragtime music featured syncopated beats, creating toe-tapping anticipation for the listener, and it was a sensation that flooded the U.S. between 1897 and 1918. Scott Joplin led the way with his Maple Leaf Rag, published in 1899. Now let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Scott Joplin's life began just 35 miles south, what is now known today as Texarkana. His mother took special interest in his education and introduced him to music. Throughout Joplin's life, he played other instruments such as violin and the cornet. However, the piano was his instrument of choice, and play he did. Starting at the early age of seven, he would find a piano whenever and wherever he could. The young Joplin would discover the occasional piano at the homes where his mother would clean and do laundry. By the age of 14, Scott Joplin was traveling the Mississippi Valley entertaining at honky-tonks and piano bars, eventually ending up at the 1893 World Exposition in Chicago. There, he would expose himself to new opportunities and garnered much recognition. The next year, the educational seed planted by Joplin's mother was now going to grow even further at George R. Smith College in Sedalia, Missouri. It was there Scott Joplin grew a passion for the theater. This love for the theater, however, did not derail Joplin's first passion and talent. By 1899, his Maple Leaf Rag was published and quickly became the most significant piano rag Great to listen to. Well, it's now 1901. Joplin is now famous, moves to St. Louis, and begins his work as a composer. His passion for the theater and resulting first of two operas, named A Guest of Honor, started touring through the Midwestern states in August of 1903. However, tragically following one of the performances, the box office cash was actually stolen. Joplin was forced to terminate the tour. The written score and most of Joplin's belongings would be confiscated by bill collectors. A guest of honor, unfortunately, now is considered lost. Just a few months later, traveling through Little Rock, Arkansas, Joplin meets the love of his life. Her name is Freddie Alexander, and they marry right away. Traveling home to Sedalia, Joplin writes this upbeat tune, a ragtime song illustrating his new love for Freddie. It's called the Chrysanthemum. Take a listen. Joplin and his new bride travel home to Sedalia where Freddie suddenly falls ill and passes away only ten short weeks after their wedding vows. Joplin is shattered and following the funeral leaves Sedalia never to return. Shortly thereafter in 1905 it is believed in all of his grief Joplin responds with the song Bethina. Notice the stark contrast 
when compared to the chrysanthemum written by Joplin just a few short months before. The mood has clearly changed. With the passion for theater still burning, Scott Joplin moved to New York in 1907. Joplin would have to fight past the music publishers lined up to issue the now famous Joplin Rags. His desire to compose saw the completion of Joplin's opera, Tremonitia. Not able to secure financial backing, he had to self-publish this work in 1911. Tremonitia, unfortunately, would not see a stage until over 50 years after Joplin's death. At the time of his death, Scott Joplin was all but forgotten. Now say hello to the 70s, the Rolling Stones, Elton John, and Scott Joplin. That's right, Scott Joplin, a classic record label released recordings of Joplin's rags covered by Joshua Rifkin. This was just part of the whole story for Scott Joplin in the 70s. This bold move by the record label sparked the interest for many, including theater and movie producers. Joplin's only surviving opera, Tree Manisha, finally reached Broadway, and the award-winning movie The Sting featured Joplin's music throughout. The 1970s would also see appropriate recognition with a special Pulitzer Prize, and even extending into the early 80s, the recognition continued with the United States issuing a Scott Joplin postage stamp bearing his image. Scott Joplin's music finally had the audience and the recognition it deserved. Music 